You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor Wade. I'll be your host today, Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC. And as usual, I'm joined by Alan Ginger, the Director of Hunting Ops. How are you doing, Alan? I'm doing very well. How about you? Good, good. You've been a busy guy going to all these breed day hunts here in the last several weeks again, huh? Yeah, well, May and June is just chock full of them, but it's, we talked about it a lot. It's just fun getting out and seeing uh, all the different people. Every breed day is, and every area is a different group of people that you, Honestly, at some of the breed days, you see people once a year, they don't, maybe they don't make it out to other events, maybe besides Automos or Winter Classic, depending on where they are, but it's good to see people. Yeah, that's, that's very true. And that's, uh, that's an observation I always saw, always saw as well. You know, when you go to, you see a lot of them there at their breed day hunts, you don't see anywhere else, yeah. even at Automos or the black and tan days. There's a lot of black and tan guys that uh, go to black and tan days that you might not see anywhere else, but that's true for all the breeds really. But Hey, that's all good. They come support their breed and, uh. It's always, I got a chance to go down to Peru, Indiana there. Uh, you kind of stole all the breed day hunts here for, you know, the last couple of years, but I'm glad you enjoy going to them. And, and uh, uh, you know, it's uh, helped me a lot. I've got a lot on my plate as well, you know, but I do miss going to some of them. Uh, but I had the chance to go down there to Redbone Days, and that was a good time again, seeing all the guys and everything. So Yeah, you got yeah. to come down. You came down Friday after after work. I did. And uh, I did. see the, the hunt portion of it, see everybody at round draw out. And then, yeah. then you got to conduct the uh, the auction there that they do to raise oh, money yeah, on, yeah, yeah. on Saturday that was morning. Fun. That was fun. Yep. Yeah, it is, I was wondering, it, at first it looked a little light, but it ended up crowding up pretty good with people in yeah, there. Yeah, they did, you know, and it was kind of, it was interesting. They raised a bunch of money for it. They used that money to help with their red book and, and everything, so that helped out a little bit. Yeah. It's always a fun, back in the day, I remember we used to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Ronnie Smith from Arkansas used to be the auctioneer. He's, he was the comedian. He could get you to spend money that you didn't even have. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah. yeah, it's a good time. Sure. Well, hey, talking about Red Bones a little bit, uh, like you said, it was there June 1st through 3rd, and it's a uh, familiar place for us over the past couple of years, Miami County Fairgrounds in uh, northern Indiana, Peru, Indiana, uh, to be specific. and First went there with the World Championship. When was that, 2019, 2020? We went there 2020 and 2021. 2020, 2021. So the COVID year was the first year we went there. Turned out great. We yeah. turned around and went right back to it the next yeah. year. Two years in a row, no dead gas. Uh, some of the best hunting there is in the country. You can't ask, and just a strong group of people. And yeah. Within an hour of there, there's so, so much hunting and so many coon hunters. Yeah, just about an hour north of Indianapolis. Uh, yeah, just a great, great area. Since then, now they've had other breed day hunts. They've had, uh, what all have they had? Black and Tan Days? Black and uh, Red Tan Bone Days, Days was there. Red Bone Days was there this year. Of course, Rochester down the road, which isn't twenty less than 20 minutes right. from there, 15, 20 minutes right. from there, had Walker Days a couple of times. So that area, and, and there's uh, multiple clubs there that work together. I think for Red Bone Days, the uh, Prairie Timber Club in Monticello and the Cass County Club there in Logansport were yep. Kind of heading that one up, but they also you got the Ladders Ford Club and I don't know why and all and all those are within a 30, 45 minutes yep. of there. And anybody that is familiar with coon hounds and coon hunting uh, will know the name Russell Beller, and it is in Russell Beller's backyard. Yeah. Peru, you, Indiana. It, no matter where you go, you're driving by his property to get yeah. there. It seems like he owns, uh, he owns yeah. half of that, that county there, it seems like. Yeah. But, man, what a setup he has, but. Yeah, so so we were down there, but uh, super dry. It's been super dry everywhere I've been the past few weeks. I haven't mowed my yard in almost two weeks. Yeah, mine's yellow. <laughs> my grass is yellow right now. But uh, I finally got a good, I think uh, yesterday, I just got back from uh, English Days down in Florida, Illinois, at Charlie Brown Park, and uh, the whole drive back it rained. So hopefully that means that uh, yeah. for the hunt this coming weekend, the hunt, the hunt conditions will be a little bit better, a little bit of moisture surely help, but yeah. I'm sure it got soaked right up. Yeah. But uh, let's talk about some overall winners for for Red Bone Days. Um, the the overall night hunt winner is a dog that uh, I've been seeing a lot on the circuit lately. I've had multiple breed day events, some major events, and that's field champion, water champion, Grand Night champion, show champion, Butternut Creek Red Badger. Uh, it's a Red Bone male owned by Marlon Martin in Michigan. Uh, Trey Clifford from here in Michigan has been hunting this dog for him and uh, got to know him and his 
his dad Josh running around the past few weeks and a good group of guys there. Yeah, I first met them at uh, a Beagle event yeah. at our Beagle Nationals, and I I didn't really know them that well. They're from obviously from up here in Michigan. I've seen them before, uh, but when I saw him at Redbone Days, he was wearing a Beagle hat yeah. from our Beagle Nationals or whatever. Then I started talking to him and everything, but uh, I got to know him. That's when I figured out he was hunting uh, Mr. Martin's dog. But uh, Marlon is a guy from uh, he's up uh, a couple of hours north of us here at the office here uh, up in. Uh, in Michigan, he's had red bones for a lot, a lot of years, and he's had some good ones over the years. And uh, you don't see him at a lot of the hunts. He's kind of the man behind the scenes. He hunts his dogs at home, and he farms a lot of his good ones out. When he has a good one, he'll farm it out, get some young guy to hunt him for him in the hunts, and that's the case here. And he usually puts a good one. When he puts takes one to town, it's usually a pretty good one. Yeah, I don't think Badger's any different. I think they – they they hunt him hard and it shows he's he won winning his cast at least kinds of two two nights three nights didn't he oh he won all three nights all yep. three he nights won, yeah. he ended up winning this hunt with triple cast wins yep and uh, they do an overall winner which was Badger and then they do an opposite sex winner that ended up being uh, champion bankrupt money baby this is a red bone owned by Jeff Gilfillan of South Carolina. I don't hey, know if you're familiar with Jeff or not, but uh, he won the opposite sex with the money baby dog yeah so they're another South Carolina entry coming up to Indiana and doing well it's always good to see yeah. Yep, absolutely. So congratulations to the hunt winners there. Uh, and then let's get into show winners. And I know you may be really familiar with these two dogs because you were part of the panel that chose them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the overall bench show winner was uh, the male uh, confirmation champion, show champion, Wabash River Lost Highway. Uh, this is a red bone male owned by Andy and Keith Emery, along with Curtis Elburn and Nikki Elburn. And uh, the Emery's, of course, down in North Carolina. You got the Elburns right there close by in Peru. Yeah, I'm not sure what the lineage is behind these uh, behind this dog, but most of the Elburns they're breeding their own dogs have for years and years and years. Right. Curtis, uh, Andy's dad, lives right there in um, in Peru as well, so that's also in their backyard. But uh, uh, they've had nice dogs for years and years, and this is no exception. I'm not sure what it's off of, but yeah, you're right. I was on one of the uh, three three person panel, and uh, and this was the, our male male winner and the overall as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, this dog's directly off the Marble Red dog that they've been doing. They did so much winning with the past four or five years, but uh, and then you guys also ha were tasked with picking uh, a female and ended up winning opposite sex, and that was uh, show champion Stone Nickel Big Sky Redbone female owned by Mary and Rodney Bergbauer in Indiana. Oh, Sam, I've known Rodney for years and years, and Mary as well. Uh, but they've all they always has some uh, a nice lineup of red dogs as well. So yep, that was our female winner. Yeah, and nice then, dogs. You said you enjoyed your time there. I sure enjoyed my time. Uh, I had a chance to talk to uh, to one of the officers there, which we've been doing uh, over the past few weeks, talking to officers of different associations. And this time I got a chance to talk to T.J. Boland uh, with the National Redbone Coonhound Association. And uh, T.J., he's a, he, he does a lot for that association. He, he, he does. We talk about a lot of good stuff here. And I hope you guys, uh, if you're interested in Redbones or just being uh, – you know, involved, uh, give it, give this a listen, hear what TJ has to say and, uh, reach out and help out. All right, y'all. I'm sitting here at National Red Bone Days in uh, Peru, Indiana, with Mr. T.J. Bolin of the National Red Bone Coonhound Association. How's it going, T.J.? Oh, doing good here. A little bit tired, but it's real good, though. Yeah. So, so what do you, what are you here for the Red Bone Association? What, what's your job here? <laughs> I'm the secretary treasurer for the National Red Bone Association. So that means you do a little bit of everything. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so hey, first tell us a little bit about you. How did you get into coon hunting? How did you get into red dogs? Well, uh, I've been in the red bones uh, since I was about nine years old. Uh, uh, I had a hip injury, and an old man uh, lived down the road. Thought it would be good uh, physical therapy to get a dog. So I uh, got a little red bone female, and the rest is history. And uh, I've had a couple of those since, I think. So. <laughs> yeah. And your dad, your dad's been a red bone man the whole we, time. We started the same time. Okay. You know, he'd been around, you know, the guys that hunted and had dogs and stuff. But that dog there that we got in around 1997 was first dog that we had. Yeah. Very cool. I guess I didn't know that. <laughs> so, uh, so you were competing with the red bones at that time or how long did it take you to get in the competition side of things? Pretty quickly following that, that, that dog was a red bone. It was a red bone female. Yeah. And um, she was, like I said, she was nearly a year old when we got her. And I would say within that year, year and a half, we were competing with her. 
we didn't really know what we were doing. And looking back, we didn't realize how good a dog we had. But that's part of the reason why I've stuck with red bones is because, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's just fun to win with a red bone. Everybody has a – it seems like everybody's got a walker dog. I, I guess I like a challenge, and yeah. I want to I want to have a, a red bone that competes. And that's, that's something that I've always enjoyed doing was uh, going out on the cast and just being able to be competitive. Yeah. You don't win every one, but right. – uh, being able to be competitive and letting the gas see a nice red bone work is, is something that I really enjoy. Yeah, so right now you're hunting a female you like pretty good, right? What, what's the female you're hunting these days? Uh, I got a couple of them, actually, but the one I've been hunting most recently and just recently finished to uh, Gray and I, my dad just finished her this weekend, is a female named Superbird. She just turned three a couple months ago. Yeah, she she finished this weekend and qualified for the world all in one swoop. Huh? All in one swoop. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's had a few cast wins this year already. She, Can't beat that. She's yeah. all right. Yeah. She's qualified for TOC. <laughs> she's qualified for the world. So y'all got a busy year ahead of you. Just, she's just, grand for Autumn Oaks. Yeah, just just got weaned off a of litter pups. Pups are just eight weeks old. So. Well, I saw your daughter. She's been uh, dragging one here all over the fairgrounds. She's gonna have that one good and broke in. <laughs> yeah, that's good. She's been socialized and around everybody. So yeah. Yeah. So so you have you're married. You have two daughters. Both and uh, I see you guys all have a hand in the hounds right oh, something yeah. you guys all enjoy oh yeah, oh, yeah. They, they all enjoy it yeah. and uh yeah the, my two girls are grace is six and maddie's two and they love the dogs and, oh yeah and uh you know playing with the puppies and and working the dogs and you know having fun with them they go hunting with me some and yeah. whatever you know non-school nights and weekends <laughs> and stuff yeah so today, today's friday so we're still pretty early <laughs> in the weekend but uh, your your oldest daughter was out here handing out uh, the trophies for the show, so I got a pretty good kick out of that. She did a yeah, she, she did a real good job. <laughs> she really enjoyed that. Yeah. <laughs> so so let's shift gears. Since I've been here, uh, you and your dad, in some capacity, have been affiliated with the the National Red Bone Association officers this entire time. Uh, how did that? All, how did you get in, into the whole uh, being an official in the association? Yeah, I've my dad and I both have been involved in the association for since the early two thousands. Uh, I've been a member nearly 20 years. Um, uh, I was, uh, I guess my first experiences with the association were really positive experiences. Had some really good mentors and older older uh, gentlemen and ladies too that I met and had great experiences with. Uh, uh, I went to, let's say, Redbone Days in the early 2000s. Like I can remember going to Greensburg, Kentucky, Keosauqua, Iowa. And that's actually, Keosauqua, Iowa is where I... Uh, Received the the first Horizon Award that UKC gave out to the Red Oh Bull. right, yeah. yeah. So that was uh that was a 2002 winner and got the award in 2003. That was the year so that the Horizon with, Award started. Yeah, that was very guys, cool. Uh, like Harry O'Median was the president, and he awarded me the award. And I had other friends that were involved, like Mr. Ed Brown and yeah. some of the other Mike Markham, you know, guys like that that uh, either passed away or are still involved in the association in some capacity. You know, and, right. You know, they were uh, uh so. And that's just to name a few of them, but I had lots of lots of guys that were involved and encouraged us to be to stay involved. And I um, I was asked to become a director. Uh, I was a teenager, around 15, 16 years old. I probably went on as a director wow. and uh, served as a director for around nine or ten years. And then uh, when uh, Dwayne and Kitty Bruff, uh, she was the secretary treasurer for quite some time while I was a director, and then I. Uh, I got elected to be secretary treasurer about nine years ago or so now, and uh, so I've wow. been in, been in that capacity now for that long. And time yeah. flies, yeah. About and to have your decade. <laughs> yeah, almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's been good. I, I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Uh, I I enjoy seeing seeing like what we were talking about the young people coming to sport, and new people coming, and enjoying red bones and and uh, getting familiar with it. I you know I feel like I've been around around long enough now that I can help somebody else come in and yeah. uh, understand a little bit about what's going on and uh, i i don't mind that one bit and uh it's something we've kind of enjoyed we enjoy having people come to our event and ask questions and, and learn what's going on and hopefully they continue to come back and continue to enjoy the red bones and yeah you know and uh, just kind of just grows and builds that way yeah you talk about being the first horizon award uh, member and harry taking your picture and then today you got you're the one who awarded the horizon yeah. award it was a Miss Bryn Posey, right? Yeah, got yeah. awarded the Horizon yeah. Award today. Yeah, kind of come full circle on it. Yeah, you. it has. I gave <laughs> a couple of those out now, and I kind of, I really enjoy it because I have yeah. the ties to that. Yeah. Well, you you work with kids, right? Oh, so yeah. So yeah. the youth is yeah, something I, you're used to dealing with the youth, and that's the a big part of your life. Yeah, yeah. I'm a high school ag teacher, 
uh, you know, near where I live in, in Southern Illinois. And, uh, I deal with high school, you know, nine through 12 graders on a daily basis. And, uh, <laughs> I enjoy working with kids of all ages though, but yeah, it's something I, I really truly enjoy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so let's, let's talk a little bit about the association. Um, the National Redbone Coonhound Association has been around for a long time. It's the Chartered Redbone Breed Association for, uh, for UKC. Um, if, if I was a Redbone fancier, or even just a Coonhound fancier who's interested in supporting the association, how would I become a member? Well, there's a, there's a few different ways, but the, the, you, know, you can, of course, find my information online or you know, through our Facebook group, the National Redbone Association Facebook group is pretty active. My wife, Casey helps me run that and pretty much runs it and posts a lot of information on there. And there's things attached to the top of, you know, like to this, to the top of that page that, you know, links to where you can pay on your membership online now and links to our website to find all the contact information of, of our um, officers and directors and things of that nature. Um, so we try and make it as simple as possible. You can find my information there, phone number, email, um, things like that. And just reach out to me through either, through the, those methods or Facebook or, you know, any of them and we'll try to try to get back with you and, uh, and explain to you because, you know, we have the, the yearbook and, you know, it's, it's not, not digital, but it is something that you can hold in your hand. You can carry with you. You've got the membership list of everybody that, you know, is a, is a red bone enthusiast, is a member of the national red bone association is, is, is there, is there and right. their information is there. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely a benefit there. And it helps us keep connected to see who's near where you're living. And, sure. and uh, you can find reputable breeders that way and reach out to people. And I talk to many people throughout the year that reach out to me because, because of the website. You know, they do a simple Google search or whatever, and they find, find that information. And they, they're interested in the breed, and it kind of goes from there. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, of course, you guys, are, you guys are set up and have a presence at a lot of major events, like yeah. Auto Mokes Winter Classic. They can always swing by the table. Sure. Get entered up there and have a conversation and get acquainted that way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Autumn Oaks, Winter Classic, the Grand American. Yeah. We always try to have a representative there that is, that has that can make the contact. You know, and um, you know, get your membership information. Really, we just would like to have your address, yeah. uh, so we can mail you that yearbook every year, and you get to see the see the red bones, see the winners throughout the year at all the major events, and the, and of course the National Red Bone Days, and you get that membership list. Of, of people that live near you that that have been around the Red Bones and have joined the association, and some of them you can see how long they've been members too, yeah. and you see how long they've been around. There's there's some there's some guys and individuals that have been around the breed a long time and have a lot of experience. Yeah, so you guys have the the National Red Bone Days, which is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. um, you guys also have uh, a, a youth championship like Jefferson, Ohio, every year, mm -hmm. and then uh, you guys have something called U.S. Red Bone Days that you're semi-affiliated with right in uh, mm -hmm. illinois every year Can yeah yeah we uh that? we work with the american red bone association on that event each year it happens the same time first weekend of august uh, it's in southern illinois might be a little bit warm on those weekends you know the dog days of summer there but yep. um it's something that's occurred for many many years now yep. uh before my time i started in the late 90s and it was going on then and in an established event and the National Red Bone Association and the American Red Bone Association go together and and work together on that and make it a, make it a yeah. successful event and bring guys together for another event to come together and yeah. and network and talk about talk about their dogs and have fun. Yeah, good way for the two associations to yeah. coexist and work together. Right. So let's talk about National Red Bone Days a little bit. Um, we're here on Friday afternoon. So yesterday you guys had a all Red Bone RQE had. Pretty good numbers for the for the RQE. I right. thought as hot and dry as it is here, we're in Peru, Indiana, and it's good hunting, but it's dry as a bone outside, isn't it? But uh, and a good show. And today, so far, we've had you guys had water race field trial yesterday. Got the whole gamut today. So you guys still embody that. You guys have every event at Red Bone Days. You have the everything. We we try to. It's not yeah. a requirement. Um, we we you try to actively approach and, and engage in discussion with clubs that would be able to host our event and have a good event for our members if it's available and if it's convenient and the club's willing to help us put on a field trial and water race and and the events where we can keep people actively uh having fun and, and yeah. promoting their dogs we're all for it something and, uh, for everybody here. right yeah, yeah. and we got a nice there's nice camping usually we try and find nice nice places where we can pull in camper and 
and you know have a nice a nice event and relax and yeah. and kick back and visit with your friends and your family here while you're here. Yeah. Speaking of that, if uh, if a club was interested in in maybe getting some details on how to host National Red Bone Days, how would they go about that? And and mm-hmm. what what do you need out of a club to to be able to host this event? Sure. Uh, the the easiest way to find it, we have an application process or a, a bid contract is what it is, and it's a simple. It's a few pages. You mark through a checklist, and we see how many camper hookups are there, how many guides you can provide, and you know what that you know what that's going to look like once we get to the grounds. Is there shower facilities there and things like that um and of course would you be able to have a water race and a field trial and those types of events and that helps us make decisions on where we go um as we can compare different clubs as they send in the applications and all those applications are are digital online on our website on our facebook group but you can also reach out we can mail them to you we can email them to you if you can't find them on the website we we try to be very accommodating and, and try to get the word you know get the information where it needs to go and yeah by all means if your club is interesting in, ha- in having an event such as Redbone Days please reach out to an F- or a National Redbone Association. Talking, you got your high school ag teacher yeah, in there for a second. I know. I just I know. <laughs> it's it's one hard of those to turn things. It off sometimes. I know, I know. It's hard to. It's a, yeah, <laughs> definitely for sure. But uh. Yeah, like last night we had uh, 57 dogs, and it, and we we ranged from... Which 40, was all red bones last night. All red bones. Yeah. But tonight we'll have a large event. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to gauge what we'll have, but there's going to be a large... There's going to be a lot of locals come here. out tonight. Yeah. And uh, so we've had a, around 50 to 60 dogs on the, on the Thursday night event. It's going to be a little larger on Friday, and then Saturday might fall off a little bit. So it's not a huge event, but there, you know, there's some dogs that's got to go to the woods. So you're talking 15, 20 casts, possibly. Yeah. Or usually. And uh, we're looking at a June date for the next couple of years now. Yeah. Uh, the last weekend in June is what the board of directors decided to go with this morning. Um, so we're looking at summer, good weather, hopefully. Might be a little warm. Kids are out of school. Kids are out of school. A lot of kids here this weekend. A lot of kids here. Our kids' shows have been a lot of fun to watch. A lot of smiling faces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've had all of our... We're looking at the benches now. We've had all those benches full, had lines waiting to get on the benches. Yeah, good it's stuff. It's been fun. Yeah, so and they've been enjoying it. And, uh, yeah, been a good time with that. And they, they're going out there to the field trial and water race and watching that too yeah. and taking part in that. And I think that's a lot of it is uh, growing that, that next generation and getting them involved so they can so they can carry on and see what it's all about too. So. Yeah, and so we got done. You guys have your meeting here on Friday afternoon. Is there anything new, that any new news really from the meeting that came out besides maybe – Lo- the location of next year, I know we, we'll talk about that, but is there anything else new on the horizon for the association that you're looking into, really? Not really. We're just trying to uh, just trying to have good events for our members yeah. and for the people that come and attend and support our events. Yeah. That's the main goal every time we, we have uh, we have Red Moon Days every year is we want to provide a quality event, whether it's the show or the hunt or, the, or anything in between. Yeah. Uh, those are the main goals. We want people to go out and have a good time, have a fair chance, and uh, – be putting good, good hunting and uh, having good guides and, and things of that nature. That's that's one thing that we really strive to achieve each year. Yeah. So you had the meeting. You had the meeting today. Tomorrow, you guys, uh, you guys have the auction, which is something uh, none of the other breed associations do that I'm aware of, as far as having a, an auction to raise much money for the association. And that's been happening for forever. Oh, long time. As long as I've been yeah. around, and I've been around a little while now. Yeah. Um, and it's something that we fundraise for the association with. Sometimes we say it's for the red book and to help offset the cost to have that nice, that nice red book. We, we have that little extra money and it's fun. A lot of the guys just want to, want to support. I've seen, I've seen watermelons bring a hundred dollars and things of that <laughs> yep. nature and get cut up and passed around just to have fun and have, have, uh, have things like that. And, uh, you know, and then there's other things, pocket knives and things of that nature. And, you know, and anything that a coon hunter thing, you know, or they might be interested in and, I've seen lots of those things donated. Yeah, you know, and usually your vendors and your you know your leashes and your yeah. your vests and things like that. Sometimes you know, coon hunters need lots of uh, oh yeah accessories gotta have a lot of, and things be like out. that nature. Yeah, <laughs> we got to have something new like that around every once in a while. But, That's uh, right. And you know, we've seen like even uh, stud feeds to dogs or even semen Some show up on old year. time. Yeah, puppies. I've seen yeah. puppies come on auctions and. Uh, you know that just it's just a fun thing that we do, and it's it's something that the 
the Redbone people are used to. It happens not only at our association at national, but the American Redbone Association yeah. does it as well. So I guess the Redbone guys like a good auction. <laughs> and uh, our old uh, our old uh, Redbone friend, Mr. Alan Genrich at UKC, I heard is coming to our uh, auction tomorrow and uh, I heard he's going to get his uh, yodeling voice out and be the auctioneer, I heard. So. Yeah, well, I know this will, <laughs> this will come out after it's over, but this is a warning for anybody who may be listening to us around. You better have your money tomorrow because <laughs> Alan's going to pull it out of you. Yeah, so it's all in good fun, and, and yeah. we do it just to just do, just support and have yeah. a good time. Well, like like we talked about earlier, there's there's a little bit of something for everybody here. <laughs> even if Even if you have a dog that's not ready for the hunts, come out and swim or show the dog or d- just – be, get in the auction, bring something for the auction, do some bid, and just come out and have some fun. It's a nice family atmosphere. And it's a good time. So I, I encourage anybody to to reach out to the to the National Redbone Association, get it earned up, be a member, be active, and uh, be part of the numbers of you know it's a it's a there's not many of us out there, so you got to be strong, got to stay together. So just come out and meet somebody new. Yeah. That's the big thing is you don't see these. You might see them on social media or things like that, or be able to follow them, but when you can actually see them in person or go hunting with their dog and uh, things like that. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. And that's why we do red bone days. It's, it's to uh, promote and, you know, to have better dogs yep. is the main reason why we have it. And so bringing our people together where they they can network and become friends and build relationships goes a long way. Yep. That's right. Well, I, I guess we've just about covered. Is there anything else you want to say on behalf of the association yeah. or yourself? No, I just want to thank you for your time, Trevor. Yeah. And thank you for putting me behind this mic. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm glad we got a chance to talk about it. It's a good way to get uh, information to people who may not know about the association. But uh, I guess a lot of people who weren't here in the meeting today may not know where this event's heading next year. You want to tell us where and when this event's going to be next year for anybody uh, listening? Next year, this uh, this event will be in uh, Tell City, Indiana, the last weekend of June. Yeah, I think it's 27 through 29. So go ahead and put in those vacation days at work, <laughs> circle it on the schedule, and uh, uh, come out and see the Redbone guys. It's a fun time here. So. Appreciate you sitting down with me, TJ. Thank you, Trevor. Have a good rest of the weekend. You too. Thank you. Alan, we both had Dogtra Pathfinder 2s now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dogtra Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar partner of UKC. Yeah, so there, I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview with TJ. Uh, Yeah, he's just a great guy, isn't he? You know, I got to know TJ a long, long time ago when he actually, when I first joined the Redbone Association, his dad and mom were uh, uh, members back then already. Uh, Tim uh, Bowen and uh, TJ was just a young kid. Yeah. I remember when he had his first, one of his first dogs he competed with was a female named Joanne. And she was a pretty nice dog. He did quite a bit of winning, but just a good young kid. When I say a young kid, I'm talking a teenager, you know, just 14, 15 years old. And they had, uh, uh, at, at the time, I was uh, one of the officers and did the Horizon Award. And uh, the first, uh, my first recipient for the Horizon Award was actually TJ. Come full circle. It has, because now he's, you know, this year you probably saw him. He's now uh, awarding that Horizon Award, so that's Kind of cool, but yeah, he's grown up to be a, a good steward of the breed and doing a lot for their association. Absolutely. And it turned out he was a really good pick for that Horizon Award with all he's done for the breed since. Uh, let's shift gears into English days. Uh, fresh on my mind, I'm just here off of it. Uh, that was June 7th through 10th there in Florida, Illinois, a uh, place that is synonymous with coon hunting. They host a lot of major events, and uh, they got it down to a T. Uh, they had really good entry numbers there this weekend. They were, they were up every night from last year substantially. Um, Friday, I think they put something like 128, 129 dogs in the woods. And they and just the network of guides and everything they had, they had the cast drawn out in 10 minutes. Yeah. And they were calling cast by, I think the deadline was 7, and they called cast out like at 7.13 or something. Yeah, that's a combination of both the association, the guys helping run the association involved with the hunt, and the guide network there at, yeah. at Flora. You know, and they're, most of the breed associations, do, a, do all of them do a good job. Yeah. But there's some of them that are just, you know, they have a – network of their uh everybody has their job or whatever as far as the association members officers 
the, the English association, there's very few that do it any better yeah. than, than they do. Yeah. And we're going to talk, I think we're going to uh, do a segment at some point talking about taking entries, but the way they do it is, and like you say, there's a lot of cl- uh, clubs that do it like this, but you can't do it really quick unless you do stuff efficiently. And, and you know, every table, there's a registered table, a night champion table and a granite table for this charter breed that they have a chance to, to split their champion entries. And as people are entering, they're marking who the guides are. They got a they got a stack of their guides. They're marking who their judges are. They got a stack of uh, judges, and then they got their their pool of entries here. And when you do that, it makes it really easy it for does. you. It does. They've got it together. <laughs> yeah, it's not just getting all their entries and throwing it in a box here, you know, and then separating everything later, you know. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Yeah, if you're doing it as you go. You can save yourself a lot of time on the back end. So. Uh, but uh, let's talk about some of the winners. Uh, the, the overall winner and the queen of hunt of the weekend was night champion Cabin Creek Wacky Jackie. It's an e- English female owned by David Minson of Oklahoma. Yeah, good for him. Here's another out-of-state dog comes comes over and does well there. I don't know either one, so I'm sure you can maybe fill us in more than I can on this. Uh, yeah, well, I, I got to see David there, and he, he was he was ecstatic. He said, this is this is the top of my resume there on Saturday night. I think he had uh, five Five twenty-five on on Friday ended up having a thousand pl- plus points on uh, on Saturday, which was the highest score of the entire weekend, and uh, uh, kind of ran away with the uh, with the fem- the female portion of it and, and edged out uh, our king of hunt in the in the overall portion of it. But he was there with uh, with uh, Kirby, uh, John Kirby from Oklahoma. They were oh, they yeah. rode it together, and uh, good thing John said he was just around to tote trophies for him. Yes, because <laughs> he, he had four or five trophies yeah. in his hands walking out of there. So yeah, congratulations, to those guys. Probably. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> Kirby's just a great – he's a great guy. Yeah. And uh, our opposite sex is uh, no stranger to the English breed, and I was happy for these guys. Opposite sex at King of Hunt was Grand Knight Champion 2, Briar Creek Steel Drum, an English male owned by Chris Girth and Jim Ridge of Indiana. Yeah, that name Briar Creek is synonymous to the English breed. You know, it has been for a lot, a lot of years. You know, uh, Jim is the uh, – he's a, he's a, one of the old patriarchs of the breed, you know, so to speak, yeah. I guess. He's a – uh, I would call him a living legend, I guess. Sure. Done so much for him, uh, goes back uh, years and years and years, you know, and has had a lot of success with his English hounds. And his uh, son-in-law, Chris, uh, has a, uh, a vendor business, hunting hunting store and everything, and just a good guy as well, and uh, hunts a lot, hard hunter, and has always got a dog ready for the hunts. And he's been doing quite a bit with drum. You know, we talk about uh... – good vibes and good karma and things like that after seeing how much they donated to the English Association for the Champions Classic and then you got the the youth stuff that they put on and how much stuff they they gave back and then to see them have a good win like this uh, I was happy to see it they they ended up scoring just around 500 550 each night for a total of 1075 I think was their their final uh, score for the for the two nights combined and the uh, Sitting around there waiting for everybody to roll in. There was multiple male cast winners, so nobody yeah. knew who the who the overall winner was going to be. But I had a chance to talk to Jim there and Jim Frederick, the the Florida Illinois uh, uh, club officer. And I, I was wondering how many times he had won it. Uh, you know, it's, as long as he's been around, how many dogs? It's still not easy to win these things. And he said, honestly, uh, just to be honest with you, more people know more about my history than I remember of myself. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, Jim yeah. was telling me that uh, or, uh, Jim Frederick was telling me that he, he at least won it once there in Florida when because he guided uh, Jim Ridge that night. I think it was like a little bit of uh, a dog fight or something right out of the truck where two or three of them got scratched, and Jim ended up treeing a few coons and. Uh, ended up having a pretty good score and win the whole thing. So he's at least won it a few times, but yeah. I'd have to go back in, in in the history to see how many times he's won it, but well-deserved for them. Yeah, for sure. You know, Chris, we talk about Chris a little bit, and we, we talk sometimes about uh, folks that are good stewards of the sport, and Chris is one of those. You know, he, he always – he never backs down from when somebody asks him to help guide or to help judge and things like that, whether it's Autumn Oaks, the World Hunt, or at an, any an event like that, he always steps up, and it's – uh, just a good ambassador to the sport, as Jim was when he was younger, you know. So, uh, let's shift gears to the show a little bit. Our king of show for the for the weekend was Grand Champion New Heart Running Man Zeke, an English male owned by Stacy Ragsdale of Iowa. Hey, good for her. That's a nice dog. That dog's older already, and the dog's yeah. been winning for uh, ever since she brought him up. A white dog, kind of an open open uh, colored dog, white. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, nice hound. Yeah, congratulations to her. Mm-hmm. And uh, the queen of show was uh, a registered dog. I think it made champion this weekend there at English Days. Bear Branch Lou's Little Dimple, an English female owned by Michael Seats of Illinois. Yeah, 
Well, that Bear Branch name is very synonymous as well. You know, yep. Mike's been around forever and ever and uh, has, a lot, has had a lot of success with, uh, with the shows. I think he just had one that made a Hall of Fame that we talked about in one of our recent episodes, but Mike's had a lot of good English hounds down through the years. Well, I'll come back to Mike in, in just a second, but let's go through. Uh, they they do a little bit more there at English Day, so I want to talk about all their overall winners. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'll we'll, we'll touch in the interview we're going to play in a second is their uh, kind of champions hunt on uh, Thursday, an invitational style hunt that you have to qualify for through the year at their sectionals or major events. Um, and that you have an early round there on Thursday and the top four high scoring cast winners that are qualified for that uh, advance to a late round where they hunted off. And this year, uh, Roy Rogers, uh, he, he owns, co-owns this dog with his wife, Anita. From Arkansas. That's right. Ended up winning it with Grand Knight Champion 4, Little Miss Dolly. I think uh, Cole Ramey was handling this dog oh, for yeah. him. But uh, that's a good win for those guys. It's well-deserved. Roy is a hard hunter. He is. He is. Now, there's one guy that we see at a lot of events. Yes, he's sir. he's always at English Days, but he's always at, at our events, Autumn Oaks, the Winter Classic. He seems like every year he gets a dog in the World Finals, seems like. So, yeah, he's uh, also just another – Good steward of the sport. Well, those guys that's always packing around a good female. Yep. Um, and then also there early on Thursday uh, is there a Vicky Hill Memorial Bench Show um, and the King of Show for that event on Thursday, which is I think that means just as much to them as winning the the overall for the weekend is the, the Vicky Hill Show on Thursday. Yep. Uh, there's only there's only one coon hunter that I know that was from Rowan, Tennessee, and it was Vic Donna Vicky Hill. Yeah. And that was in uh, Far East Tennessee, isn't it? Pretty much on the line. I remember going, yeah. uh, went right through it, going to uh, the Grand American one year okay. when we drove down there. We took a little different route, but it's over by Johnson City, okay. over there in that area. I got you. Ro Ro I don't know if they call it Rowan or Roan Mountain, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's where they're from. Huh? And it is mountainous there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the yeah. name's not deceiving, huh? Right? No. It, well, the king of that Thursday show is a, a name that we already mentioned. Grand champion, New Heart, Running Man Zeke uh, won that show as well in the, the male portion of it. Uh, uh, that's uh, Stacy Ragsdale in Iowa winning that one as well. So congratulations on Stacy. Cleaned up this weekend at, at English Days. Um, and the reason I tabled that about Michael Seats is here's another dog out of uh, out of his dog, Bear, Bear Branch, Bobby Lou. Uh, obviously a dog that he lost. Uh, a, a couple years ago now, and uh, I did a lot for him. But uh, and he, he was sure proud this weekend. You could tell whenever whenever he was getting his pictures here. But this is a a grand champion three sideshow Bobby Sue that Jacob Brooks down in Virginia has been showing, and that kid's doing an awesome job. He has. He's been winning a lot with that little dog. He's uh, Jacob is probably what. 14 15 how old is he i don't know he's, he's a teenager he's a foot taller than me so yeah. i hate to think he's that yeah. young but yeah he's he is he's can't be more than 15 16 years old yeah and just a good kid too he's uh wise beyond his years he's been around dogs all his life obviously but uh very yeah, respectful kid very, yeah it yeah. does a great job showing dogs very very talented as a as a as a dog handler yeah and second year in a row that he's won this vicky hill memorial show on the on the female side of it so yeah. congratulations to jacob absolutely and then uh, this year, they you, uh, the English Association has always done youth events, but this year they actually uh, did their English Youth Championship that coincided with the event on Saturday. So they had a, a licensed youth show and a licensed youth, uh, youth hunt on Saturday. Had really good numbers. They had 32 yeah. in the show and ended up having 14 in the hunt. So good. great good. show out for their first yeah. event. Back in the day, they used to add that when I was uh, still going to it, uh, back to – you know, before you started there, they had them on Thursday. Right, okay. And I think it was non-licensed then, but, right. uh, yeah, so, yeah, well, that's good if they can uh, if they can have enough guides and everything for it to put it on Saturday in a licensed event. Why, well, that's good. Yeah, absolutely. There was uh, uh, plenty of people that were willing to help and uh, and go out on it. And let's talk about some of their overall winners. Uh, first out, started with the night hunt. Uh, they did, a, obviously, a senior and a junior uh, divisions, and they had an overall winner in each of those divisions. And our, our the senior youth winner was uh, Cooper Cordway, and he was handling a dog named Timber True Sweet Alley, an English owned by Jeffrey and Trina Phil Howard of Indiana. Uh, Cooper was a, a young man. I think could be more than 14 or 15 years old, so congratulations to Cooper on his win there. And uh, the junior division winner was Caden Molina, handling a dog named uh, Champion, Grand Eye Champion, Split Creek, Susie Q, HTX, uh, an English owned by Julie and Randy Cook of Indiana. They had a whole crowd there with them. There must have been uh, 10, 12 people in their picture. So it, Caden had a, a strong support system there with him that weekend, and they were having a good time. Yeah. Uh, all the, there was multiple youth there with that group, and they, they, had a, they had a blast that weekend, I could tell. 
And uh, moving on to the the show side of it, we had uh, in the the youth king of show was Garrett Fugit uh, handling his own dog. This is champion Kansas boys free Willie, an English, and uh, Garrett's out of Kansas, um, obviously by the dog's name there. So Garrett looked like he was a, a little bit older and uh, had a nice dog, and I always like seeing the youth handling their own dog. And to kind of uh, continue with that theme here, the next one, Chloe Gibson, who's been kind of on a roll lately, handled her uh, black and tan female grand champion CNM's outlaw Della Rose as she cones with Misty Yarrington uh, to a queen of show victory there. So congratulations to all the youth over the, over the weekend. Congratulations to all the winners over the weekend. Yeah. It was a, a great weekend in Florida, and uh, and uh, I had a chance there to talk to – it was a busy weekend, especially on Saturday, but I, want, I like to wait till after the meeting – to have these interviews to see what comes out new, if any new business is brought to the table that they may want to discuss. But I was, after they drew cast, I was able to to pull away uh, Philip King, the younger Philip King, um, to and also Troy Shellhorn, who was a member, of, who's a board member and also uh, running for the office of president right now. Uh, both were very active that weekend and, and had a good they had their finger on the pulse of everything that was going on. So I was able to conduct interviews with both of them at the same time there after we drew cast. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this interview with Philip and Troy. All right, everyone. This is Trevor. I'm sitting here at English Days on Saturday evening. Uh, we just drew cast here for the Saturday night hunt. And I'm sitting with a, a couple uh, members of the board and uh Officers of the English Association, I got Philip King right here and Troy Shellhorn. How you guys doing? I'm doing all right. Yourself? Doing good. Doing good. Well, Troy, since you talked first, I'll uh, I'll start out with you. Uh, just just first, tell us a little bit about you, uh, just briefly, how you got into English dogs, and and ultimately how you got involved in this association. Well, I actually uh, didn't coon hunt. Did a lot of outdoor stuff for a lot of years. Uh, deer hunted, did stuff like that, and then. Uh, good friend of mine and he's actually my boss Shane Cannon actually got me involved in the coon hounds when he moved up there and uh, he uh, had English dogs turn me on to him and been hunting them ever since and then been coming out to English days for several years autumn oaks several of the big ones and then last year I got voted on the board of directors with the association yeah yeah great so you're just a new new uh, board member but already kind of proven throwing your weight around I see you guys been you've been Real active on social media, uh, getting information out to people. Uh, you've been working hard, getting sponsorships for folks. So, so not just uh, one of the board members who who kind of sit around and, and twiddle their thumbs, but you've been uh, you've been working hard to, to get it going. I think. Well, we're trying, but did you notice he put in a weight joke there about me? I just wanted to see if you caught that little <laughs> Phil. <clears throat> but no, man, it's uh, got in the association. Got several good people trying to help run this. Uh, they asked if I'd take over the youth association and we, uh, I said I would, and we started and came up with the idea that we'd have a sanctioned hunt and we rolled with it. Uh, the sponsors that we've had for this and the people that stepped up and donated has been just great, uh, today. And well, this week we had, uh, two raffles raffled off a thermal and a custom made knife by Jesse Harrison, who was a forged and fire finalist. And uh, between those raffles and then had another knife donated by Tom Corbett, we raised $1,700 to start off the new year for wow. the Youth Association. So uh, I'm hoping that everybody will come back next year and we can make her bigger and better next year and keep on rolling from that. Absolutely. Well, we got another one here sitting with me. This is uh, Philip King. Uh, Philip, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us uh, how you got started in English Hounds and ultimately how you got into the association. Um. Everybody in the English breed knows my Uncle Phil. He's the treasurer of the association. He started me out. I was four or five when he took me hunting the first time, and that's what he hunts, and that's it just kind of blossomed from there. And uh, you, you kind of got – have you been a uh, – how long have you been a part of the uh, uh, English association as far as board or officers go? I was uh, put in by the vice president – or by the president last year as the interim vice president when R stepped away, and – this June started my first elected year. Nice, nice. So you, you got a couple more years yet on your term, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, hey, you've been doing a good job. I know the past couple of years you've uh, been in here running the show, and it seems like everything's went real smooth. So everything's going good, looks like. Well, I mean, I, it, it, an army's only as good as a ship it's riding, and Absolutely. we've got a good group, and we've That's got a right. good club here at Florida, and 
you know, they, everybody works hard and it, it just makes for a good smooth weekend. Yeah. Well, Hey, you talked about, uh, it just, well, let's just talk about the association as a whole, you know, the, the board and the, the officers goes a long way, but also, uh, an active membership goes a long way as well. Uh, people being here, being active, donating, uh, bidding on the raffles, uh, or in auctions, buying raffle tickets, entering in the events. Let's talk about, uh, I guess, first, first off, uh, to, to join the United English Breeders and Fanciers Association. How, how would I join and be a member if I wasn't already? Well, um, you can get on our website, which is U- uebfa.com, and we have a, a membership page on there, and you can pay through PayPal or several. I think it's just PayPal. Uh, it should be Venmo and Cash App on there as well. Uh, Big Phil added that just so everybody had uh, we had all the options. Yeah, or you can contact our membership chairman, which is Andrea Washburn, and, uh, you know, she, she can hook you right up, and, and you know, we'll get you. You know, once you join on on the the website, you know they'll mail you a membership card out. And our membership's a little a year is a little different than a lot of associations. We run June first to June first. Okay. You know, we coincide. We started last year. It coincides with our English days. So you, it starts in English days and ends in English days. I got you. And and also outside of that, you can also you guys are always have a representative at. Grand American, Winter Classic, Autumn Oaks, uh, all those places at a ta- membership table to answer questions about the association and take memberships there as well. Yep, sure do. And they even got the mail-in option as well. Let's not forget yep. that. There still is that, that There still is that option available. Yeah. Yeah, you got you mentioned the website briefly, and you guys kind of had a revamp of the website here in the past year. And, man, uh, I, don't, I can't remember. I think it was Perry Fraser's daughter maybe that did that. And, man, what a job she did. Yeah, Claudia, it uh, – it's a completely different animal now. You can get on there, and there's pictures of just about every Hall of Fame dog that yeah. we have voted in, um, our lifetime achievement winners. There's all kinds of information. Um, the membership directory is on there. I mean, she does a really good job with it. And uh, Perry keeps the membership. Perry's the membership director, or what is the was the membership chairman. It's Andrea Washburn now, but they've done a really good job with it. And it's, there's a lot of useful information. If there's something you want to know about the association, that's a good place to find it. Or you can pick up one of our yearbooks and, you know, every, you know, a lot of the same stuff's in there. Yeah, yeah, I like the website. So it's interactive. You can see all the old pictures of past winners or Hall of Fame dolls and all that good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, so so we're talking about – and also let's, let's not uh, forget to mention the Facebook page. If somebody's – you know, obviously most everybody has Facebook, and you guys have a pretty active presence on – on the uh, Facebook page. What's what's the Facebook page? Where can people find that? UEBFA memberships. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing my best to try to keep that updated all week long uh, with the dogs going to the woods, bench show results, everything possible that I could think of, a lot of pictures. Um, if anybody wants to get on there and go back and read the final four play-by-play from our invitational hunt, it's on there. Um, just trying to stay active. We got several people to get on there comment and and anybody got any questions yeah you can get on there or you can feel free to message any of us we're more than happy to answer questions we may not always answer you right away but we'll get back to you as soon as we can just understand we are trying and we uh, we see it where it may just take us a minute to get there well just because you're an officer doesn't mean you don't have a job and and kids and other extracurricular activities to do too and i think people understand that but Every time I see a question on there, it's always answered pretty quick, and it's a great. I mean, Facebook's a great platform in that way that to to spread information quickly, and if you're following the right stuff, you can get all the information you need pretty quick. So, well, let's talk a little bit about sectionals. Uh, I know uh, you guys have pretty uh, you, English sectionals are seem to be doing really well around here. Talk a little bit about how if clubs are interested in hosting sectionals, how would they go about doing that? Um, our sectional chairman is Michael Phil King. You can contact him. Um, his number is 865-640-2750, and he will get you. <laughs> He's putting I, you on blast, Big Phil. Oh, I want everybody to know how to find him. <laughs> uh, he'll enjoy that, I he'll, guarantee you. He'll, uh, you know, he'll get you a packet out, tell you all the information you need. Um, our sectionals are different. We have a plaque option, which is – I can't remember the price on the uh, plaques. Not right off. But And then we have a, a, a paper certificate option, which if you do that, we only charge $2 a dog. But these sectionals are important because we have our tournament of champions for the English breed on right. Thursday night at English Days, which is a big deal. Uh, it is. We yeah. we give a we give a great big substantial prize package out. 
um, Briar Creek Hunt and Supply and Chris Garth, they gave $500 this year. And we got a dog box that was custom made that we give. And, well, you know, we, we have a lot of stuff, outlaw lights, donated lights, and, you know, for the final four. And we have belt buckles from a place in – I can't remember that place in Oklahoma now, but James could tell us. But we, we do a lot. I mean, and those sectionals – are vital to getting dogs qualified. I mean, you can also qualify at a major event by winning your cast, but it's a, it's a, it's a big deal. And everybody that comes, you know, getting qualified to hunt for that great big package is, is you know, it's a great thing. And it, it used to, it, it's the most important thing we do on Thursday night yeah. you know, on, on the whole weekend, really. Yeah. And I mean, we hunted 87 dogs Thursday this year. I All mean, English we, dogs. Yep. We was up 10, 10 from last year. Yeah. So that was great. It was good to see that we had a few more show up this year. So that was, that was nice. Yeah. Well, for anybody out there who's a member of a club who, who may be wondering how to increase their numbers a little bit at the, at the local level, uh, sectionals, breed sectionals are, are kind of a good deal for people. You, obviously, they have a chance to get qualified for, uh, for an invitation-only type of hunt here. Um, and also, it may increase your entry a little bit by doing so. But So be sure you reach out to the English Association, uh, Philip King, look him up. He'll probably on the probably on the Facebook page there. Uh, you can go to and find him on there, or you can uh, go back and get his phone number off here um, and and get in touch with him that way. I don't know how you're ever going to live that one down. <laughs> he's going he's going to hurt you severely. I got well, a feeling. Well, I probably owe him for years of abuse. So, um. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk about let's let's uh, shift into uh, English days uh, before we get to Thursday night. Let's talk about Wednesday a little bit. A couple of years, it's probably been three years now. You guys have started on Wednesday night with the. Uh, a licensed regional qualifying event, and uh, this year you guys had a pretty pretty good turnout, especially for the hunt. I believe we had thirty eight dogs. We were yep. up thirty eight. Yep, thirty eight dogs, nine up from last year. So far, we've increased every night. Yeah, um, counting tonight, we put in one hundred and one in the woods. Counting the youth hunt tonight, I think we were forty dogs up from last year for the total, not counting the youth event. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we we've done we've done good this year on increasing numbers. It, yeah, it's showing. Well, anytime it's showing an upward trajectory and not a downward trajectory, you got to be happy about that. But I think the the RQE on Wednesday night not only does it give people a chance to qualify for a world for the world, but a lot of people get up here on Wednesday and they have a chance to uh, to hunt under the umbrella of the permit here and and do it uh, legally without having to buy a license. So it's a good deal for everybody. So so a good idea by by the association. Um, on Thursday, you got your invitational type stuff, and it starts out with the bench show, uh, Vicky Hill Memorial Bench Show, which I know is a big deal to English enthusiasts. She was a, a Vicky and Don Hill both had a, a big impact on the English breed, so that show is is a big deal. It's it's almost uh, almost comparable to winning the king of, king and queen of the whole show. Um, and then I don't know if you want to talk about the show at all, but how do, how do you qualify for the show? Um, you the the, the Vicky Hill Memorial Show. It's is it open to everyone? It's open, just okay. all English dogs. Um, you know, Vicky Hill, the Mike Seats made a big speech out there Thursday and told about the kind of lady she was and you know, she would give you the shirt off her back and that's why this show is named after her. She yeah. put her heart and soul into the breed. Yeah. And you know, these people show up and that's their goal that whole you know, is to win the on Thursday. Yeah. It's and a good uh, prize package and open for everyone. So that's uh, yep. That's great. That's great. And then um, on Thursday night, you talked about the your tournament champions, champions classic. Uh, I think I've seen it called both. And you said to qualify for that, you can enter, you can qualify for it by winning at sectionals, but then also at major events. Yeah, well, it cast one right now um, at, at major events, major UKC events, Autumn Oaks, the breed of breed days, uh, the Grand American Winter Classic, Southern English days, Western English days. We recognize cast winners from those events, and we allow them to hunt an invitation. Yeah. And this, and when they come on Thursday night, it's a licensed hunt for the people in the Invitational. Yeah, but you, you're hunting only against other dogs that are invited into it, and you take the top forecast winners and hunt a late round for those folks? Well, the the past two three years, we've drawn all of them together. And the incentive to being qualified is if you're, if you're one of the final four top scorers, you get, you're eligible to go back and recast for an hour for yeah. that prize package. That's where the incentive is. But I think we're going to work on splitting the – qualified dogs and the non-qualified dogs next year um we're, we're working on that right now. okay i yeah, got you it was the topic of discussion today actually in yeah our, in our meetings so tweaks here and there just make a tweak here and there so you just got to keep moving forward and yeah. uh just 
keep going. Well, you can tell I wasn't here Thursday night because I thought you guys split them, but I was speaking out inside my <laughs> neck here. So, but yeah, sounds like you guys are, are maybe working towards that in the future, which is probably a good idea. Um, so then obviously on Friday and Saturday night, you got your regular bench show and night hunt. Everybody knows about that, but you guys kind of do a little bit something different on Saturday night to try to keep the, uh, the attendance up. Cause everybody knows if, if you don't win on Friday, everybody packs up and heads home, but you guys have kind of tried to give a little incentive for people to stick around on Saturday night by offering an added purse for those folks. Yep. $500 added purse. Yeah. And that's uh, Saturday night's all that matters on that one. Yep. yep. High scoring dog. Is it regardless of breeders or for uh, English yep. dogs only? It it's high scoring dog from Friday or Saturday night. It's high scoring dogs, but it's does not matter the breed. But all the owners and the handler must be a member of the English Association. Yeah, well there you go. If you're a uh, if you're confident in your dog and what you got on the end of your leash, uh, twenty. How much is the membership? Thirty dollars. Thirty a twenty thirty dollar membership. Or if you don't want a mem- or if you don't want a yearbook, twenty five. Okay. So okay. we we added that in there this year. If you don't. Just we had several guys last year that showed up and said, "Hey, we're here for the added money." Yeah, and all right, well, you got to be a member. So yeah. we put that in there so we didn't have to send out so many yearbooks, and they didn't really probably want them anyway to begin with. So <laughs> <laughs> they wanted one thing, but we changed that on there so that way you just sign up for membership and you're ready to roll. Well, hey, that's a pretty good idea. That's a pre- that's a pretty good idea. Um, so let's let's you you mentioned the the youth brief uh, briefly. You guys have you guys seem like you've had a youth cast here. Uh, in the past, non-licensed, but this year you decided to do kind of an English breed champ, a youth championship on on Saturday. Uh, you guys just had thirty-two dogs in the show. Thirty-two dogs in the show, eighteen handlers. And then how many in the hunt tonight? There's the there's fourteen dogs. Wow, yeah, so, yeah. Three three dog cast in the senior division and two cast in the junior division. Wow, yeah. That's a great turn. I mean, I, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but that's a great turnout for a first youth. We, I'm not going to lie to you. I wasn't sure how many was going to show up. Yeah. But uh, we started advertising this in February, probably. Yeah. And we just started, I just started advertising as much as we could. Membership page, my page on Facebook, just keeping it active. Yeah. Hey, remember, Yeah. we're having it. Hey, remember, we're having this. I've talked to several people here. This is the reason why they showed up. They're not even English dog people, and they're here. Yeah. yeah. And our youth hunt that we're having on Saturday, or youth bench show in our hunt, we're can't, we're, we're gonna, we we're going to crowned a king and queen of show regardless of breed. Right. And we're going to crown a king and queen of hunt regardless of breed for the kids. You know, we hey, Troy is in Savannah McC- Hofstetter, and we, we put a, a pretty good youth hunt prize package together. I mean, nobody went away today without something in their hand. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, the, you guys had the, the table out here behind the show during the youth show today just decked out. I mean, you guys put a lot of thought into the prizes and everything. Do you guys want to talk about any uh, – do you have sponsors for that? Do you guys buy a lot of that stuff? Or Oh, we had so many sponsors here. Uh, I don't know where my banner went, but we actually had a you banner on You guys have on a the, big banner we with have all, a banner on not everything. Not just businesses, but also individuals have Individuals, money. every individual that donated, every business that we had that donated. Yeah. Um, we got the trophies. We got the big trophies for the overall winners. I see a bunch, a whole bunch of lights, got, hats, got trophies. Got lights for the hunt winners tonight. Got brand new benches for the kids that won the show for the overall yeah. king and queen. Got trophies for them. I had a trophy for each division winner, breed winner, all the way through. Uh, bowls. Had, you had bowls out there. Bowl, Purina had bowls out there. We had sacks that were uh, little drawstring bags that were made yeah. up, but that was stuffed full of stuff. Uh, there was just a ton of things. Yeah. It was great. And you didn't, it didn't look like a lot when we got here, but yeah. when you started unpacking things and you're like, okay, we got more than I thought yeah. we did. Well, the kids, and it meant a lot to me and I hope it means a lot to them. I'm going to be honest. I thought we had too much and I was over going, I don't think we got enough. <laughs> I was already debating on whether we was going to have to buy some more stuff. I can tell you that I was getting concerned. <laughs> Well, that's a good thing. That means there was a good turnout. Yeah. But uh, yeah, any you guys like to check out the the Facebook page. You guys, I think you posted a picture today of yep. I posted of the a picture pa- of the table out there, and we're looking at the table over there, just chalk full of stuff. So if you're a youth uh, and you, you can get here, it's it's sure worth being here. Not only do you get to get the atmosphere of a major breed day, but then you you if you're in there and you're going to get something. Seems like. Yep. And you know another thing to mention: this is the second event of the new year. For the youth spotlight series, yeah, because it, it's restart. It runs June to June, June to May, June first to May thirty first. The UKC spotlight series. So we're the second event of the year. 
get that early start. Yeah. Feels good. Have that, that in your back pocket. That we we discussed that a lot, and the other part of it was that we we did it on decided to do it on Saturday night um, because we wanted to be able to hold as many people here as possible if they was coming, and make sure that all the parents had time to get their kids there. Didn't want we talked about Thursday night because it was just an hour hunt, and it's like, well, you know, people working. They may be driving from farther away. That way we try and give as much opportunity as we could to get everybody here that we could get here. Right. Yeah, it makes a makes a lot of sense. And so you, you just had your meeting today. Uh, I don't know you guys. Uh, did, is there anything new that people can look forward to from the English Association? Are you working on anything new for sectionals or uh, for the event next year or anything to speak of? Not at the current moment that I'm aware of. Just a lot. Of, we got we got all the new Hall of Fame dogs that are up yeah. coming on the ballot. Uh, bench dogs hunt dogs we got officers going to be getting voted board of directors going to be getting voted in is officers it, is getting anybody vo- up for president or what well <laughs> somebody twisted my arm enough that it turned black blue and purple and said you willing to do it and i said well i guess you've twisted long enough i guess i'll try it and i uh i accepted a nomination for the president so we'll see how that goes yeah, and well, we've got several officers that are going out and coming in, and we put two people on the ballot. You know, we try to find quality candidates, and it's, uh, you know, we're always looking to make things bigger and better. To, you know, we're already planning for next year's youth hunt and next year's English Days, which speaking of next year's English Days, it will be in far Illinois here again. Um, they do an excellent job. Um, they get the guys in and out quick, the cash drawn. They've got good guides and coons, and we're coming back. Yeah, coming back to Other than being a little dry, it's been a good week. We've had a lot of good scores. Not a, Ain't no blowouts, really, for the most part. Been pretty even across the board, but it's been a good week. It's been a good week, and I'm ready to go to bed. So <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys have had a long week, and I appreciate you sitting down with me. But, yeah, like you said, Florida next year. Uh, and, dang, in the past couple of years, it's been hot, hot, hot. So I know it's dry, but it's been nice to have a little bit cooler weather this week. Last weekend. year wasn't bad comparative to two years ago. Two years ago, uh, I think half our people went home on Friday night because it was so hot. <laughs> yeah. It was it was miserable. And uh, hopefully we can keep that streak of good weather going. Just a little wetter next time maybe might be a little bit appreciated. Yeah. Well, before we get to final thoughts, one more thing you talked about. Uh, coming back here next year for Flora, if a club's interested in hosting English Days, how would they go about finding the person to talk to on that? Um, on the United the United English Breeders Fancher Association website, there's a uh, there's a button you can click. It's information. You can scroll down through there, and there is a, there's a place that says bid packet. Huh. And your club can look at that bid packet. It's four or five sheets. I mean, you know, we just asked that we have it by Friday of English Days, so we can vote on it. You you fill the bid packet out. You know, there's several different things. You have to put a meal together for the invitational on Thursday night okay. for the members. And, you know, just campers, show us. Campers are almost camper, a must yeah, for this. Yeah, it's got to be at a fairgrounds because we have to have camper hookups. Is water race, a field trial water race a big deal to you guys at well, all? Or? The the field events, you know, we have a section on our – we don't do them, but if the club wants to do them gotcha. and make some added income off of it, we don't turn so that away. Your club, you're, if you're at a fairground, you don't have to be set up for that. So that's no. not a necessity. So that's no. good. And, you know, we, we look at the guiding and where it is and, and a whole number of hotels and, you know, the pricing. And, sure. and you know, we sat down on, on Friday and then the board of directors, they take those bids and they sort through them, look at the pictures, and they decide on the best option for the association and what we need to do. And then that's how we decide where it's going to be. Absolutely. Yep. Well, good deal. Hey, I appreciate you. I know you guys got casts to go on tonight. You got things to do. We're all in for a long one. We'll be here till the deadline, I'm sure, handing out to – awards and finding out who wins this whole thing but uh troy philip i appreciate you sitting down with me got any final thoughts before we get off here no man i just i want to thank everybody that did donate again it, it's it means a lot i'm glad to see it um anybody that's interested in donating or anything for the youth or whatever just get a hold of me if you got an idea i'll listen to anything you got um if you got something that you saw that hey maybe you should try this i'm willing to listen message me call me get a hold of somebody that knows who i am it, i'm you can find me pretty easy i'm usually not too hard to find and it's what i'm told anyway but uh, just let me know um any vendors out there if they want to get in on this more than happy to accept them too i mean i hope we got everything that we got for tonight everybody's happy with it and then i hope i can do bigger and better for them next year and uh other than that we just appreciate everybody on the deal I just want to thank all the other officers in, in the club, the club members, the association officers, 
everybody that's donated. I mean, they put in a lot of hard work this weekend. We couldn't have done this without them. Yep. Officers, officers, board members did uh, some good work this weekend up here, handling casts, getting everything, bench show, all of it. Did a great job uh, this weekend. They've sit at these membership tables and these yearbook tables, handing out yearbooks, and I, you know, that's stressful. I mean, sit all day in one spot, and uh, I mean, I can't commend them enough. Yep, I guess, and I'll just throw in, appreciate all the hunters and sh and show folks coming out and supporting yep. the event. Uh, you heard it, Florida, Illinois next year, first weekend in in uh, June. I think it's fifth through eighth next year. So go ahead and make plans to to come out. You'll enjoy yourself here in Florida with the English Association. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was an interesting listen there. You know, Philip has been around for a long, long time. You know, and he's kind of taken, he's kind of stepped it up. You know, and and uh, uh, you know, serving the English uh, Association well. He's uh, he's all in, wants everything to go well, and does a great job with it. Wants to make sure everything's uh, taken care of and and things go well and put on a good event. And he uh, he knows uh, what it takes to put on a good event for sure. Yeah, Philip. He, uh, he obviously he 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 go, travels to a lot of major events. He's always running different races and different things. But uh, he's been working on this. He's been badgering all the uh, vendors and every and all the companies around for donations for the event and for the youth portion of the event and he's done a great job with that and then also you got troy who uh who's became who's so active on their social media uh platform and i honestly if i could it, any information you need it was right there on their english facebook page uh that's such a useful tool for them and he's became a big part of keeping everything on there so with those guys like that in your in your association you got got a they're younger you got a bright future with them uh leading the way for you and a good healthy association absolutely well i sure hope you guys in, enjoyed this uh episode you know we we got a bunch of stuff coming up that we've talked about before we're gonna we got a bunch of rule stuff that we're gonna be talking about here after the breed day stuff is over we got a chance to catch our breath uh, but i hope you guys enjoyed these interviews with the different associations uh, we've got one more to go we've got the plot association coming up and i hope we're able to, to get with somebody from the leopard and walker associations in the not so distant future because we didn't have a chance to, to conduct those interviews but uh, we all got all that on the table coming up this summer to keep you guys busy while it's a uh, hot hot outside for that uh for your hunting stuff but uh, uh i don't know that's that's all i got for you today so i hope you enjoyed this episode Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.